Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you a strategy which can be used with any of the leaders from the Monsters faction. The main focus of this strategy is to use the breedable type cards to increase your strength and actually win the game. Now you will have to do some crafting for this since it will take some time to gain the cards needed but it's totally worth it since the win rate with this strategy is quite high. I do want to add a note as well just to say that I feel like this might get changed at some point and I will update this guide when it does because this strategy is kind of crazy. To quickly summarise, I'd rate this deck 7 out of 10 crowns for difficulty which means that it isn't easy to always pull off since there are ways to mess this up which will end up with you losing. Similar to the crack and crate strategy, when it comes to round 3, you will get very light on cards and have to kind of rely on luck to get a good one. However, if you go slow and think this through, you will be able to pull this off and get a good win rate with this. Okay, so let's jump straight in and actually show you the deck and the cards needed for this strategy, and go over the reason why we've picked them. Now, first thing you probably notice is that there's a lot of duplicate cards, and this is for a very good reason. Reason being is because the main focus of the strategy is the ability which lets you play all copies of the unit from your deck. Now, the main cards that allow you to do this are the Neckers and the Arrakases. So later on, I'll cover how to use them and when, but for now, let's just go over the other cards. So also in the deck, we also have a Necker Warrior, which creates two copies of a bronze unit on our side of the battlefield and adds them to our deck. Now this card is a major key in the strategy since it allows us to create more of our breedable type cards. And with this strategy, the more the better. And two other cards to take note of are the Foglets and the Ancient Foglets. Now these cards also come as a backup but they can also be used in conjunction with the main strategy. So the Foglets are meant to be used when there is fog on the field. However, if the fog does get removed then the normal Foglets will actually get killed and removed from the battlefield. Now, while there is fog on the field and these cards are active, each of these cards actually gains one strength which is brilliant because it actually after a amount of time it does rack up strength. Another card which should be used in conjunction with the Foglets is the Woodland Spirit. Reason being is because you can actually spawn fog with this unit and three Rabid Wolves. Now something to take note of is that the Rabid Wolves are actually breedable so if you're going to use them in the Monster's Nest try to use this first. Now you may notice I also have an impenetrable fog in my deck. I mainly have that just in case I don't get a Woodland Spirit. And second to last we also have the General card which we're mainly going to be using in round one or round two. As you can see we have two Fiends, one Manticore, and one griffin. Now the amount of these can be changed but I definitely recommend having at least one. The griffin can be dropped completely but again I only want that for round two or three if it ever comes to that. And finally we move on to the special cards of our deck. Now the main special card to take note of here is the monster's nest. Now you want to get as many copies of this as possible, preferably three. Two is okay but if you're going to have one you will struggle to actually pull off this strategy. Now the ability of this special card is to create and play a copy of all breedable units on your side of the battlefield. So for example, if you have six Neckers on the battlefield and two Arak has, so after you play the Monster's Nest card, you'll actually end up with 12 Neckers and four Arakhases, Arakhases I? I'm not sure what the multiple is of that, but yeah. And just to go over the rest of our special cards, we also have a Scorch, which allows us to take out one of their cards if it's too high, just in case. We also have Manticore Venom, which removes four strength, from a non-gold unit and all copies on its side. So the reason we have a Manticore Venom is in case we come up against an Aerodin playing this strategy, but it could also be replaced with a Lacerate card. And the reason I have the Thunderbolt Potion is just in case in round three you ever need that extra buff, I try to save it for then. And finally, I did actually forget to cover the Commander's Horn. Now, the Commander's Horn is your ticket to paradise pretty much. So what you could actually do is you could play all of your Necker cards and breed them and then play a Commander's Horn and you will still save your Arrakases for the next round or to be used whenever you need. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. I try to save it for round three in case it's a very close call or just try to use it in round one just for that extra buff. So those are the cards. Now let's go over which can be swapped out or what can be added. So I would actually decide against adding any more cards to this deck and only use it for this singular purpose. However, it can be expanded by ha adding Imlarif, Yennefer or the Last Wish special card. Although if you do want to add those cards, you will have to get a load of scrap to be able to craft them to be able to add them to this deck. Also, you can switch up some of the cards in this deck to add unique cards like a Grave Hag, but the cards I'm showing are the minimum needed for this strategy to work. So those are the cards in the deck. If you need a full list there's going to be text in the description for you to be able to follow that and use that. But now let's jump right into some battles and show you how to actually pull this off. So before round one even starts try to re-pick so you can get at least one Necker Warrior and have a Monster's Nest card. Also if you end up having a Necker Warrior in the starting deck try to have two of the same type of breedable cards. I'll explain later why. On the first round, I actually suggest you using your leader's ability and play Eridim. 
any gold cards and any fiends or manticores that you have in your hand. Reason being is that they are very strong cards and your opponent might actually pass and let you win and then you'll win the whole game with a 2-0 result. Moving on to the second round now, this is when we actually put our strategy in motion. Now in case you haven't got the main key of this strategy, the breeder card types actually work by placing all copies of that unit from your deck onto the battlefield. So you'll want to start by playing the breeder types that you only have one for in your hand. For example, if you have one Arakas and two Neckers, play the Arakas first. Reason behind it is because we will be using the Necker Warrior to produce more of that card, which we can then use when we place down our second Necker. Now, if you end up having two of each type and have two Necker Warriors, that is just brilliant. However, if you have two of each type and have two Necker Warriors, be sure to play one, use one of the Warriors, and then play the other. And then obviously do that again for this other type. Once you've played all the available breeder types and used your Necker Warriors, now is the time to use any Monster Nest cards, which we will duplicate all breedable type cards on the battlefield. Now this is the main source of how you get your strength. However, once you've done this, you're most vulnerable to a Lacerate card, as it could do a lot of damage and potentially get rid of all of it. Straight after using the Monster Nest cards, you want to use in a Commander's Horn or something that will increase the row strength. However, since the chances of us getting a Commander's Horn is pretty slim, it isn't mandatory, but if you do have one, go ahead and play it. After doing the main part of the strategy, hopefully you will em end up winning that round. So, moving on to round 3. Whenever I play this strat, I try to save the Wild Hunt ri Riders till round 3, but of course you don't have to, you can play them if you think you need it for round 2. However, if you are going to do that, try to save some high strength cards, or cards that will make a big impact, like a Scorch, for round 3. So now I just want to mention some things that you should look out for while playing this strategy. As I said previously, you want to use your Ancient Foglets and your Normal Foglets whenever you have a Fog card. Optionally, if you have Fog, Ancient Foglets and Normal Foglets in round 1, you could actually use those in round 1 and win it that way, rather than using any gold cards and your high strength cards. However, if you do have any of the cards, just remember to use them directly after a Fog card gets played, either by you or your opponent. If you don't have a Fog card and one hasn't been played yet, playing the Ancient Foglets without Fog will be fine. However, I definitely don't recommend you playing any Foglets. If you don't have a Fog card and one hasn't been played yet by you or your opponent, play your Ancient Foglets without one and it'll just be fine. Okay, so I've covered the strategy, now let's try to talk about how we can actually defeat this. <laughs> now, in my experience, it is quite difficult to actually try and end up winning against Eridin. Now, whilst I've been playing this deck, I definitely don't think you're going to end up winning the round where you spawn all of the breedable type cards. So since this strategy is only guaranteed to win one, one round, keep that in mind. In my experience, the only deck that's actually came close to beating me using this strategy is the Northern Realms with Faultist. Reason being is with Faultist you can actually duplicate a bronze card, and with the Normal Realms you do end up having one unit that has really high strength. Now I am planning out how to create that deck at the moment, uh, there'll be an annotation on screen once I've made the video, um, click that and it'll take you to it. But for now, when you have experience in the game, I just recommend just using Northern Realms and having a look at some of the cards and what they can actually do. Another thing which is quite useful is having a Lacerate card. Now a Lacerate card does 3 damage to one whole row, and whilst your horde is actually spread out across melee and ranged, unless the enemy has 3 Lacerate cards in their hand, they can't really take out all of it. So whilst playing this strategy, things like the Commander's Horn or any other card which can actually buff the, ro the whole row and not just one card, is very key. Now you can also use Fog, but bear in mind that you will take out the Arrakis, but you will also be letting your opponent use Foglets. So for that reason, I actually opt against using any Fog against this strategy. However, the Neckers aren't actually immune to Frost, whereas the Wild Hunt Riders are. So definitely keep that in mind and make sure you pick the right weather when you're playing against this strategy. Another card to keep in mind as well is the Scorch card. Now there's a very rare chance of you taking out a whole row of these units with the Scorch card because there are only three and two, which means that any other card kind of actually beats them on strength, which means the Scorch will affect that and not the Horde. But in the rare chances where that isn't actually happening, you could get away with using the Scorch card and then take, out, take it all out. So that's how to play the monsters with the breedable type cards as the main focus of the strategy. If you watching have any suggestions, improvements, or notice any flaws in the strategy, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll reply with my suggestions what you can do to combat it. However, thanks for watching another guide. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now.